Can I tell you a story? So, my actually now ex-girlfriend, but this happened quite a few years ago. Uh, we went on a trip to Hawaii. Now, she'd never been to Hawaii. I love Hawaii. She, I was there when I was 16. I was like, I wanted to go back. So we went on a trip to Hawaii, three-week holiday to Hawaii. And we get there, and so we, we landed at Maui Airport uh, at night, like 10 o'clock at night, and it's amazing. The door of the plane opens, and right away you can like smell flowers and fruit, and it's warm, and it's beautiful. And we're, we're driving down the West Maui Freeway, and there's mountains with little pinpricks of light on them, it's just gorgeous. And she's, uh, she's a, you know, a girl from a Southampton council estate, and she's like welling up. She's like, I never dreamed, I've, you know, because for us people in England, Hawaii is this magical, non-existent destination. For she's like, I never dreamed I'd ever come to Hawaii. She's like, we're all loved up and everything. Get to our apartment. So I wake up the next morning, and she's not in bed. And I'm like, that's strange, because I'm an early riser. And I can hear her next door talking to someone on the phone. So I go out, and she's out on the balcony talking on the phone. I'm like, what's up? She goes, uh, I knew I shouldn't have come. It was a big mistake. I'm booking a flight home. I'm like, what the fuck? So I, I know exactly, and she, she, goes, she goes, it's not like I thought it would be. And I, so I know what's happened. She's got images in her head of what Hawaii's like, and she's in our apartment looking at the car park, and the picture, pictures don't match. So I immediately jump into, into damage limitation action. I said, well, let's go for a ride. We can get online at the coffee shop, and you can figure out what's the best flight and stuff. She's like, okay. So we get in the car and drive along, because I'm thinking, we'll be driving along the coast, past Kihei and stuff, and she'll see all the waves and the palm trees and the surfers, and she'll see how amazing that is. So we're driving along. She's getting worse. She's getting worse. And uh, like pretty soon I'm picking up on her. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's impossible to have a bad time in Hawaii. What, what, uh, and, and then after about half an hour, she's getting worse and worse and worse. I'm like, I hope she does book a flight home. Cause like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, so I'm driving along, get it? And suddenly it hits me. I'm doing exactly the same thing she was. So she was, she was there, and she was having a really unpleasant felt experience that was letting her know she had a ton of unpleasant feeling thought running through her thought system. And she was doing what we all do when we're feeling bad. We look around for something to blame it on. And she found the culprit. It was Hawaii. And it really looked to her like her feelings were letting her know about what a shit show Hawaii was. So meanwhile, I'm sitting next to her, and I've got a new arrival of a whole bunch of unpleasant feelings letting me know that I've got really unpleasant thinking. And I look around for something to blame it on. It looks to me like it's coming from having a bad girlfriend. I'm like, and I suddenly see it. I'm like, oh my God. And the moment I see it, I fall, I'm like, where do you think your experience is coming from? I fall out of my thinking back into reality. Amazing thing happens. All of a sudden, my heart fills up. I feel connected to her. I'm like, oh, poor baby. She's been, a, we've all, we'd already been away for a week in Canada. She's homesick. She's never been this far away from home. She's, she's feeling homesick and anxious. So my heart goes out to her. I suddenly, I go from massive, and this is the same for all of us. If you've got you, them, if you've got a lot on your, or, I don't know how to draw this right. If you've got a lot on your mind and they've got a lot of mind, you're going to be in conflict. That's where she and I were. If you have a clear head and they've got a lot on their mind, you'll have compassion for them. Your heart will go out to them. If you've got a lot on your mind and they've got a clear head, their heart will go out to you. 
If you've both got a clear head, you'll feel connected. Love, connection, all that sort of stuff. So the challenge isn't that we sometimes pick up on someone else's distress or upset or whatever, or their anger or whatever. The problem is we get tricked into believing our feelings are letting us know about them. But your feelings don't know about them. You're, it's like the engine warning light in your car. Your engine warning light knows about your engine. Doesn't know about the other driver's engines. Knows about your engine. You're living in the feeling of thought in the moment. Your, feeling, your felt sense is there. An, an absolutely crystal clear feedback on the ebb and flow of your thinking. Because thought, thought is there to create our experiential reality. That's its job. Its job is to, it's to, like, remember, look around the room. Your experience of this is being generated from within you. Holy fuck, that's really weird. Does anyone not think that's really weird? It's really weird. So thought's job is to create an experiential reality and sell it to you as an actual reality. His job is to create a relatively coherent reality that you can run with. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be able to take a step. You'd be going, well, is this real or is it a... No, it's, thought's job is to create something you can run with as a reality. So you can't check with thought. You say, is this real? You go, yeah, of course it is. That's his job. So your feelings are letting you know about the thought-generated perceptual reality you're in.